Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to MakerQuest. In this episode, I'm going to talk about microcontrollers. <laughs> okay, so what is a microcontroller? Well, it's really just a fancy kind of big name for a computer. And what it is is just a small computer on a single integrated circuit. It usually has a processor, memory, and programmable input and output pins. Um, and usually uh, they're intended for dedicated functions or for embedded purposes, um, whereas a personal computer is a more general purpose application that's run from a microprocessor. So uh, microcontrollers also usually have some onboard memory storage as well as RAM or random access memory. And uh, like I mentioned, they have these input and output uh, peripherals. So uh, what does that mean? Well. An input device that we're familiar with is something like a keyboard or a mouse, and an output device is something that allows us to see what's going on with our inputs and the microcontroller. So that would be stuff like monitors and printers. So for example, uh, microcontrollers are found all over the place. So like your TV and your microwave are both controlled by microcontrollers, and your car has tons of them. So like every time you push a button in your car and something magically happens, that's a microcontroller taking your input and giving you the desired output. Well, hopefully. Sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, but yeah, so they're pretty much everywhere. Microcontrollers have been around since the early 1970s, but it's only really been in the last 10 years or so that they've gotten a little bit more user-friendly. So in that sense, I mean, they are easier to program, uh, they don't require assembly code, which is like deep computer code, and they tend to come on these breakout boards which allow it um, to be more easily interfaced with, so you don't have to sit there and solder these tiny, tiny, tiny little pins. So that's really awesome. The Arduino is probably one of the most popular examples of that. So um, the Arduino has a bunch of different boards. Uh, this is an Ar Arduino Uno. And all of their boards can be programmed in a uh, Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. And it's a free program. It's pretty similar to C++, but there's tons of documentation and example programs out there. So it's really easy to get started with the Arduino boards. There's also uh, the Raspberry Pi. It tends to get lumped in with the microcontrollers, although it's actually a full-fledged computer because it has um, USB port, it has Ethernet port, it has HDMI, audio out. So if you have all the necessary um, output peripherals, like a monitor um, and a keyboard and a mouse, you can plug this in and use it as a, your regular computer. Uh, what's really awesome about this uh, computer though is that it has these GPIO pins which stands for general purpose input and output pins so just like the Arduino board you can uh, control physical devices with the Raspberry Pi computer recently there have been a lot of microcontrollers that have come out that are intended for even more specific functions than like the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi uh, so one such example would be uh, for wearables there are a few boards like the um, the Adafruit Flora which you can actually put in the wash. So you could like sew this to your sweatshirt and then when your sweatshirt gets dirty, you can actually wash it, which is good. Just take off the battery and it'll be fine. Um, so uh, there's also uh, boards that are intended to easily connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, with the Arduino, you need a Wi-Fi shield uh, and that can get kind of expensive or complicated in terms of programming. So uh, the particle photon is an example of a microcontroller that really easily connects to Wi-Fi. It takes probably five minutes to connect it to Wi-Fi, and then it also comes with a free iPhone app that you can program the board from. And then there are some boards, uh, SparkFun makes a lot of these, that are intended to control very specific types of devices. So for example, the SparkFun EL Sequencer is a microcontroller that is designed to control EL wire, which is really handy because EL wire is high voltage AC. Um, and then there are also some microcontrollers that are intended specifically for educational purposes. So the Makey Makey is one of those. Uh, it's a really fun board that you can plug into your computer and it overrides some of the laptop keys or keyboard keys. When you connect the bottom bar, which is ground, to the other pad, it'll activate the keyboard and you can kind of see that on the back. 
Um, so the Makey Makey is really great for kids, especially, or if you just want to play around with a microcontroller without having to program anything, you can literally plug it into your computer and go from there. So super easy. And to show you a quick example, uh, I wrote a really, really simple program for the Flora to blink this LED. Uh, and this program, you know, once you get used to the environment, it takes a couple of seconds to write. So that's really handy because you can use your imagination and control all sorts of physical things. Um, you can have sensors inputting into the microcontroller and controlling the light from that. So there's tons of different options. All right. I'll leave you with a question, and that question is, on the microcontroller boards, what is the actual computer processor unit? Or what is the device that's actually controlling everything? So what does it look like? And to answer last week's question, I asked, how does the nomenclature of calling a magnet north pole tell us something about the Earth's physical north pole? So it's kind of a tricky question because the terminology is a little bit weird, um, but that's kind of what I was trying to get at. So for example, if you have a compass and it orients its magnetic north pole towards the Earth's physical north pole, that actually means that the Earth's physical north pole is a magnetic south pole because the magnet's north pole is attracted to the south pole and south poles are attracted to the north pole. So if the compass north pole is orienting towards the Earth's physical north pole, then the Earth's North Pole actually has to be a magnetic South Pole. So kind of weird, but go figure. We like to name things, and then we get stuck with them. So, so it goes. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about that explanation or about microcontrollers in general. Since there's a lot of different ones, a lot of different cost, and a lot of different functionality, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So happy to help with that. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.